Okay guys, I'm back with Sniper here, and what we're going to work on today is introducing the stay. Alright, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to get my English show lead out, and I'm going to go to put it on him, P for perfect puppy. I'm going to put it on his neck here, cinch it up so that it's on his neck right below his ears. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring him to this end of the table. You know, I tell you the kind of mistakes I see all the time in puppy classes and people that come out here because I get a lot of people that have been to some kind of puppy class before and when they're working on getting their puppy to sit and stay they're always kind of doing the same thing where like they're going sit 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 you know stay 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 and they're talking to the dog and they're looking at the dog and the reality is you're never going to need that dog to stay when you have time to pay attention to it so I like right off the bat introducing them to the idea of staying still being calm and quiet being calm and attentive when I'm busy remember what we talked about yesterday in my video so now I'm back here up here on my elevated surface and I got my English show lead and I'm gonna use my English show lead to help me work on getting this dog to stay and show impulse control now what I have underneath this table is a is a screw and I can take my lead and I just put a little loop in it okay and I'm gonna put it on that screw that allows me to walk kind of down here to this end of the table now he's kind of stuck there right and so what I do is I'm going to pay him for not fighting being stuck. It's really such a simple concept. See, he's stuck there. He can't go anywhere, right? And so as he sits here, like sometimes when you start doing this with your puppy, they're going to go to barking or climbing or jumping or whatever, but it doesn't take long. See how he's getting up here and he's struggling against the lead? I've just got to kind of show him, buddy, that's not how you get paid. This is how you get paid. Just sit there and relax. If you'll just sit there and relax, I promise I'm coming back with something good. Now, the key here is to kind of keep track. Use your cell phone, use an egg timer, whatever you have to do. On, at the very first, you're just going to be giving him a lot of treats. Now, every day, you want to add a little bit of time to this exercise. Now, notice I'm still looking at you guys because I want this dog to always think in terms of if I get busy talking to someone, he's supposed to get calm and quiet. Okay? Now, each day, I'm going to try to stretch out the time interval between these treats. So when you first start, you might have a real energetic little puppy. I would exercise him first. If he's a little bit tired, this exercise is going to be a little bit easier. Then once I start my exercise, I'm going to give him treats at whatever interval that I have to to keep him calm and quiet. So a lot of times it's going to kind of look like this. Like treat, as soon as he gets finished chewing. Treat, as soon as he gets finished chewing. Treat, and this goes on for a little while. You know, maybe do a minute, maybe do two minutes, but track it so that you can know whether or not you're making progress each week. Okay. Now, as this as this exercise goes along, you're going to start adding in pauses. So it'll be like treat, pause, waiting, treat. Right. Okay. Then when he gets the pauses, you know, kind of down pat, you're going to add in little things like turning around. Like, see, I'm going to bring him back into that position, and I'm going to say, listen, dude. If I seem like I'm going somewhere, I'm not, really. All you have to do is sit there and wait, okay? And I do this all the time. Now, you do not need to do this on an elevated surface. I only use this elevated surface because I have so many dogs here. I don't want to bend down all the time. And also because it's easy to film. But when I'm not filming, I have these little show leads on these dogs. I have it wrapped around my neck. And I'll be walking all over my property or all over my neighbor's property. Okay, I got my treat bag on. I got my long line on them. I got my short line on them, whatever I have for that particular puppy. And I randomly throughout the day just tie them to stuff. And I walk away from them and I bring them back a treat. I walk away from them to let them know that sometimes we're going to be out in the real world and I'm not going to be able to pay focused attention to them. Right? And that's not, it's not a big deal. All they have to do is wait patiently while I'm paying attention to whatever it is that I'm paying attention, okay? And see, over the course of time, if you do this, this really takes a lot of the force out of dog training later. Because this puppy, all he knows is that Stoney's liable to have to do something, but he'll always come back. I really want to build trust. Might go over here and give Floyd some treats. Oh, good boy, Floyd. Now, see, look, that dog, if I would have told him to stay, he would have got up and left. But since I had him tethered here on my training table, or I, to a park bench, or to uh, my doorknob, whatever it is, he had to wait. He had to make the best decision. I've managed him into making the best decision. And that's what we're always trying to do. We're trying to manage the dog, manage his energy level, manage his attention span, manage him in such a way that he understands that just waiting and being patient is always going to lead to getting what he wants. 
so I can walk completely off the camera. He's, you know, naturally he would think he needs to get up and follow me, but he didn't have to, you know, because I came back. Now, he would have never known that I was going to come back if I hadn't been using this tether. So this tether, it really builds patience, really builds trust, and it also makes dogs easy to take places from the time they're little bitty puppies. You know, this dog's maybe, I don't know, 13, 14 weeks old. But after a few days of doing this, I can take him downtown, I can take him to the farmer's market, or I can take him to the soccer field, and I know that he's, when I put his leash somewhere, he's not gonna think of it as a big deal. He's gonna think of it like this. Oh, Stoney's put me in this familiar position where good things are gonna happen to me. See, well once that dog starts thinking that staying leads to good things happening, then that negates the need for me to punish him for not staying. So think, think like that. Think in terms of being proactive, managing your dogs correctly, setting them up so that they can't make mistakes, and you're well on your way to having a dog that'll come and be still and have good manners, under distraction, you know? Okay, all right, see you guys tomorrow.